What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Charlotte Soccer Show. It is your man, Danny Brams, here. And we are presented by Hotfly for our very first YouTube uh, drop of 2024, our very first decoding presser of 24. I guess we did drop the uh, end of the uh, 12 Goals of Christmas series in 24, but they recorded uh, on Christmas Eve, so it feels so long ago. First recording session of 2024 here on YouTube with the Charlotte Soccer Show. Uh, Johnny and I got a lot of big plans here uh, for the upcoming year, and we'll be we got episodes coming this week, and uh, we have more new episodes than new players here at Charlotte FC so far. Uh, we can definitely tell you that much, but I'm here because it's decoding the presser. You know the drill by now. This is one of my favorite things that I started doing at the end of last year, and we got a new presser from uh, MLS Media Day, Dean Smith address the media you remember we last decoding the presser was dean smith meeting with the local media here um in the queen city and me patting myself on the back for my extremely uh soft question that i uh, offered up to dino but uh and offering some comments here on that here we've got dean meeting with the national media this is the national media i have not heard this but i do know i was tipped off that i'm not going to really like the first question so we'll see if that holds true. Uh, other than that, I don't know anything about this other than it's pretty short and sweet, so stick with me. We're decoding the presser, and uh, let's have fun and uh, hear what Dean has to say. How do you think you're going to be able to bring what you've accomplished in England to the MLS, being that, yes, we're playing soccer, but it is a very different league, and you're kind of playing for things that are a little bit different. Like, you're not fighting for relegation. You're not fighting for a Champions League, uh, what do you think you can bring to the team? Uh, I think my experience as a coach, I've probably coached a thousand professional games at all different levels. So all my games haven't been in the EPL. They haven't been in the championship. They've been... All right, right away, first off, what what is this question? You're right. Whoever predicted that I was not going to like the first question, you nailed it. Because I do not like that first question. Not playing for the Champions League. Of course we're playing for the Champions League, except it's just recently changed his name to the Champions Cup, the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And, of course, we're planning to get to the Champions Cup. Uh, that's been a mission of this club uh, for, from Johnny and I's perspective, from the Charlotte Soccer Show perspective, since day one. We want to fight for continental glory, ultimately world glory. There's a, there's a dream where we show up somehow. I don't think it's realistic, but it is a dream that we could make it to the Club World Cup that plays in the United States uh, in uh, in upcoming years. Uh, so there's a lot of good things coming up, and uh, come on, what, what kind of we're already asking that we're already setting limits on this guy's ex uh, and like telling him that he uh, he's he's uh, demoted himself. What, what kind of question is that? And MLS media day throughout the leagues, and within all them leagues, there's different ways of playing, uh, different types of game, um, but the one thing that is the same is that you play to win, um, and that's the thing that I will bring to. To certainly Charlotte FC. To the left. You play to I do. win the uh, game. Simon, Hello. Hiya. You're Hiya. Okay. Um, there are some really different things, though, in the MLS, aren't there? The way, the way that you put together your squad, the transfer market's very, very different from, from how it is in Europe. Have you had to do a sort of crash course a little bit, or were you, with the time that you've spent in, in the Carolinas, were you fairly up to speed on on all the, all the rules and regulations that you face building a roster? No, and I've just travelled here with Wilf and um, he still doesn't know all the rules and regulations at the yeah. moment. So it's something that I've definitely had a crash course on and oh, I'll continue answer. to learn as I go. Um, under 22 initiatives, GAM, TAM, designated players. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a crash course and, and learning very quickly. So, But, you know, uh, the head coach's role is to improve players. You know, um, the... The front office and the sporting directors, that's their job to bring in the players and organise the, the budget. So my job is to improve players and make sure, you know, I uh, improve the team by doing that. Uh, that's the second time we've heard Dean say that, that his real job is to improve the players. And he, he really is focused on a micro level, hopefully not micromanagement level. Uh, hopefully it's a micro level that players can appreciate the attention to detail of hey if i make each player better at what they do in their individual role then that by default is going to make the players better or make the team better because uh, each individual aspect and unit of it is better 
And then, hey, what's up, Crackers? My cat, by the way. Uh, and then when each part of the team is better, the team is better, and then the results will be better. It's very much a uh, – it's Nick Saban esque, you know. Not like I've I've st- I've followed Nick Saban's career closely for the last decade or so, uh, and even uh, not as closely before that, but very closely for the last ten years. And uh, it makes me glad to see that something that he, someone who's so successful as him, a message that he often preached, uh, is being echoed by Dean here. I'm all for it. To the left. Hi, uh, Bob Williams from the Sun. Um, there was a previous head coach in North Carolina by the name of uh, Dean Smith. I was just wondering how much you know about him, and has there been any Jesus confusion or a, amusement of the fact that you're right. there, you know, with the same name? It's fun, but I think uh, do some research. There's definitely, I, I definitely knew about him. You know, uh, I think my children, who are grown up now, would often Google my name, and you know, it would come up Dean Smith, the American basketball coach. Oh, so now he's not Googling coach, his own name. And it's the children. I said him a previous press conference. If I'm half as successful as he has been at Charlotte FC, then I'll have done a good job. Let's sit to left with Jonathan. Thanks, uh, Jonathan Tannenbaum. It reminds me. Choir. So, like, I, I'm of- someone. I've been lucky enough to have a lot, uh, a lot of good jobs in my life. You know, sometimes good jobs, sometimes bad jobs. Um, uh, but I've 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 traveled a lot of different places in my career, but finally I finally got to a place where I really feel like I'm home where I'm at right now, obviously. But um, I got used to in my sort of moving my way up the ranks of the media industry in markets. My first job was in Idaho, and I kind of had a lot of stops along the way to get to uh, where I'm at. Um, I, I got used to like sort of leaving jobs and sort of you get this rehearsed speech, right? Anytime you don't have to be leaving jobs, anytime you're like doing something new and you sort of get used to like where you're in a transitional period of change in your life, taking on a new job, you know, like Dean Smith is, you sort of get maybe about to get married or something like that. You know, you sort of take this role, this uh, repetition, you sort of like memorize your own stories, right? And so, so you're used to telling the same stories over and over again. And so, here you can see Dean Smith clearly, like, he's not annoyed by the question or anything like that, but it's like, at a certain point, you kind of get tired of like, you know, saying, repeating the same story and over and over again. You remember at the local press conference, he said it was he, he's like, you know, when you Google my name. So like Johnny made the remark like, oh, you know, Dean Smith has clearly Googled his own name before, but now he's trying to pit, pawn it off on his kids. I don't know what the real story is. We're going to have to ask Dean that one if we ever sit down with him. A little bit about this a moment ago, but I was hoping you'd expand on what appeals to you about coming here after so many years in England with all of its traditions and all of its big spotlight. And, and how much did you hear from your fellow managers over there who were saying, you know, tell us what it's like? Um, I'm actually excited because it's different for me. Uh, it's going to be a challenge, and I like a challenge. Um, and I felt by, by coming here, the league is improving year on, year out. You know, last year was probably one of the best years it's ever had. Uh, and the improvement is is getting bigger. There's a World Cup here in a couple of years. Um, and I felt it was time for me to have that challenge. Um, the, the, the league in general now, I think the average age of players is younger. So, you know, years, years ago when it was scoffed at as, you know, more experienced players coming from Europe to the US, it's, it's no longer that. Retirement league, we'll as they used to right. call it, right? Hi, <laughs> coach. Um, well, hey, I love that answer. I absolutely love that answer because when I look at Dean Smith, you can tell, like, this is a guy who definitely understands uh, his role. And uh, when he talks about the challenge, he he always mentions the word challenge when he's answered questions like this so far in his brief time uh, at the helm of Charlotte FC. But what I see, what I hear, what I detect in his body language and his voice and his tone and all that is that he is not going to be – he's determined. You can see it. He's determined to not become the English manager who came over to America and failed. He's not going to He's not gonna have it. It's not, he ain't had it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going to put up with that. He's here to win. He's here to show uh, what an English manager is capable of. And, like, you know, it's almost – I don't want to – you know, I'm hesitant to use the word petty, but there's got to be a little bit of a chip on the shoulder of, like, hey, like – you know, football's coming home to England, right? England is the home of football. England is the home of professional football at the very least and the beginnings of, of the game the way we know it in the modern game. And, like, he's got a lot to show us. He's got a lot to teach us if we're if we're willing to learn. And at the same time, what we need to show is sort of, like, 
that we're willing to accept what Dean is preaching, right? At least for the short term, while he, uh, well, we give him the benefit of the doubt, at least unless, unless he proves otherwise that he doesn't deserve. But what he has to do is meet the moment of that pressure and, and know that he can't come in here and become, you know, the English coach who couldn't cut it in America after having good success in England. That would, That'd be a stain on his uh, his resume and his mark his career for sure. Alonso Contreras for Air Sport Network. In in your conferences, Inter Miami, we may see Suarez, Salva Busquets, and also you have the defending champions, uh, Columbus Crew. What are your goals for, in, in your first season with uh, Charlotte FC? Oh, my no, goals are to finish as high as we can. Um, <laughs> what are your goals? I don't think any any owner or sporting director will hire a coach who says he's come to finish third, fourth, fifth. You know, our Correct. job is to try and win uh, as many games as we can, finish as high as we can. And the way I look at, at the league of the MLS, it's almost like you try and win a championship and then you try and win a World Cup because it comes <laughs> to a playoff straight after. So, you know, that's what we were going to attempt to do. I love it. You know, Henry I absolutely here, love Steve. it. Let's win both. Henry Bushnell from Yahoo Sports. Appreciate your time, Dean. Um, there's been a lot of talk here about the impact that Messi's arrival had on the profile of MLS, mostly you know, among Messi. fans and, and oh. the business. I'm wondering if it had an impact in, in your world on how, like, do you get a sense for whether it changed how coaches, um, whether in England specifically or around the world, view this league? I, I just think the name of Messi is synonymous. And as soon as he came to the MLS, then there was interest. Interest from supporters, interest from coaches, from all around the world, um, you know, and that's not going to lessen. Uh, you know, he was lifting the World Cup, you know, only what, 14, 15 months ago. So, you know, it's, uh, it was a big coup for the league and it certainly, I think, changed ago, everybody's you know. aspect on the MLS now. 13 months Steve, and then we'll do two uh, more. I, I mean, room. pretty decent I answer, you know, confident. like... That's the upside of Messi. That's why Messi's here. And uh, you're going to hear me all for last year. You heard it and you're going to continue to hear it this year. Me criticizing many aspects of Leo Messi and MLS. But that's the devil's bargain we make because uh, that type of uh, interest and attention and attraction is why guys like Dean Smith want to come over and manage uh, a club that needs a man. The Washington like Post, along the lines from Henry's question about, about Messi, um, you come from a, a place with a, a big league, with big players. Um, how do you big see league. his um, role and impact here in America um, and, and on this league? I think it's been there already. Um, you know, he's, he's led Miami already to uh, the League's Cup. Um, Silverware. The amount of supporters now that have an interest in, in the MLS, not just in the US, but around the world now, it has just created a phenomenal, phenomenal interest by having Messi here. And, you know, uh, I'm fortunate enough to, I, I took Dibu uh, Martinez to, to Aston Villa, so I know him well. And he, he speaks how humble uh, a person, you know, uh, Messi is. So it's great to have him here. Back left. Love the Daniel Forestine. Uh, uh, just a curious, what piqued your interest to go to Charlotte at the same time? Now that you'll be here, uh, obviously there'll be some long distance traveling when you face Western Conference clubs. How is that going to be for your first experience on that? Um, it's not quite Norwich City where we used to fly a lot, but you know it was only a, a fifty-minute flight usually. But no, it, it, it's going to be different. I. I know the Carolinas, obviously, because my son's been there for six years. So I've got to know the Carolinas very well. It's a part of, the, of America that we, we really like. Um, but travel comes with it. You know, uh, in the UK, it was traveling on, on buses to, to games for three or four hours. This is now, you know, airtime because of the, the vastness of the country. And it's something that, you know, I will have to adapt to. And I've already spoken to my coaches about I will have to lean on them you know, for their experience and knowledge of, you know, uh, what it takes in this league with the travel. And we That's a great answer, or at least a fun question to hear him answer. If I was, if I'd had a chance to ask a second question at the local press conference, I would have hoped that I would have had the wherewithal to ask about that because it is something I was curious about, just like when you're used to, you know, bussing in the morning of a match because uh, you live an hour's drive away uh, from all your – almost everywhere you play or, you know, a couple hours or a train or whatever, you know, uh, it's going to be different when you're flying day ahead of time and you're staying in hotels and things like that. I don't know. I don't, what I would have rather heard from Dino there, I think is that, Hey, I don't know what I don't know. And I kind of did hear that. He talked about, you know, relying on his coaches to, 
to sort of help him because he does. He, but the truth is, he doesn't know what he doesn't know, whether he put it in those that phraseology or that terminology or not. Um, something he is going to he will be tested on because there's really no way to prepare for flying all around the United States, uh, you know, every few days or, you know, every few weeks, at least. Uh, follow up. Unless you've done Hi, Dean. Tim Reynolds with the okay. Associated Press to, to follow up on the messy and follow up on the messy that followed that question. <laughs> it was talked about here in Miami for so long, the, the rumor, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. When, when it actually became reality, did, were you surprised that, that the day finally came that not just a player of that ilk, but that player said, I'm, I'm going to the States, I'm going to MLS. Did, were you surprised that that day came? No, I wasn't, to be honest. Um, I don't think the, the move to PSG went as everybody wanted it to be. Um, and it felt like he wanted something new and he saw that, you know, with the MLS now as, as a growing league and one that he could help grow even further. Um, so, you know, I think it maybe surprised a few people. I think the coaching world wasn't surprised. We have time for one more question in the room. We're in the middle. Love PSG yeah, catching a side swipe there. Always down for that. Don't love that almost half the questions now at this point have had the word Leo Messi in them and no one's really asking about Charlotte FC. Pathetic. Ethan Finn, Football Cafe Podcast. So, Dean, uh, you just said you like embracing challenges. So, uh now is early stage before the first game, but at the moment, what do you think uh, is the biggest challenge uh, as you see now uh, for your MLS career? Yeah. I, I think the biggest challenge is to get the players, you know, very early thinking the way that I want them to think. Um, you know, I have to make them the best decision makers I can because that's what players do. They have to go on the pitch and become really good decision makers. Um, I have to assess very quickly the technical and tactical abilities of them. Um, obviously, being in the UK for so long, I pretty much knew every player there. This will be different for me, so my job is to first get to know my players, but then also get to know the opposition as well. Excellent. Thank you for your time, Coach. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So there you have it, 10 minutes uh, that didn't really give us hardly anything, let's be honest, but hey, um, at least we heard from Dino, at least we heard his sweet accent. Uh, nice that MLS participated. I know that the player representative that we sent out to uh, MLS Media Day was uh, Enzo, Enzo Capetti, and I have not been able to find his presser anywhere uh, that I could decode, unfortunately. Um, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I can uh, pick up a little bit here and there, and maybe I would, would be able to bring in a guest to help uh, translate and decode that son of a bee, but uh, not happening as far as I know, uh, but we can maybe fix that at some point. Um, but, yeah, that's Dino, you know, again – I have to let the national press off the hook that for for not asking him any uh, pertinent questions about some of the player uh, decisions that loom at this club. Uh, I wish they would have, but then again, I didn't when I had the chance uh, here at the local presser, so I can't really you know, be hypocritical and be mad about that. Rest assured, if I do get uh, the next time I have a chance to put any type of question to Dean Smith or uh, anyone with any decision-making power, let's say um, – on the record at Charlotte FC, I want to know their thoughts on Carroll, uh, at least until uh, there's some closure or moving on or whatnot there. But I personally believe Carroll's going to stay at least till the summer. But then again, you never know. Maybe some uh, some club gets desperate, a Portuguese club or a German club or, uh, you know, a Danish club or something. But he wants to make a move. You never know. Uh, maybe the Italian side. Uh, and they decide to go out and get Carroll Swarovski. We'll see if it happens. I don't think it will. But uh, thanks for checking out Decoding the Presser, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, there's a lot more of it coming here this year. And uh, shout out to Hot Fly Brewing Company, as always, for uh, being the ones. Uh, go get yourself a Toto a Tiempo here um, for sure. There's some big drops. Fresh Drop Fridays coming very soon that you're definitely going to want to be a part of. Charlotte FC themed. I don't know if I can give away the details, so I won't. But, uh, yeah, 